Hi, welcome to Living Hope. You know, here we really love Jesus, we love to worship and, and pray for one another, and we really love the Word of God. Now, all that is about to start, so we're glad that you're with us. This morning, I really wanted to uh, share with you about a message that I know that's been on my heart. And I know some of you guys may be, may be surprised, like I am. Um, I got a PowerPoint. What the heck, eh? <laughs> but it's called Get Back in the Fight. And I just want to kind of set the stage here. I noticed, um, I know in the last little while here, for myself, and I'm just kind of speaking on my own my own terms. I've been there's just been a sense of restlessness that has come upon. I, I really feel has come upon. And what I mean by the church, I mean like the not not living hope, but I'm talking about the church in general. And there's a there's a restlessness. I I've had a sense, and the Lord has been really pressing my heart to where it's like He had said to me, oh, well, it was confirmed through my wife. It was like, honey, she said to me the one day, she says, honey. You need to get back in the fight. And I know there's a time where there's a time to fight and there's a time to rest. And I'm not talking physical fighting. What I'm talking here, it's, a, <clears throat> it's spiritual fighting. Whether you like it or not, we are in a spiritual battle. We are. Do um, you think you can try to remove yourself from it? No. Think again. You are in a spiritual battle. We are in a spiritual battle. Good news is we have the overcomer. We have Jesus. And we are here to be more than conquerors, is what it says in the Bible. So getting back in the fight. In past times, I know we've chose, I, I'm speaking for myself, I chose, and even people to this time, they choose not to fight back because they're afraid that if they kind of get, get too engaged within the um, fighting back with the enemy, they're afraid, oh, I don't want to do that because I know what's going to happen. I'm going to reap, I'm going to, uh, the enemy's going to come back at me. You know what? And I'm gonna, I want to just challenge you and I want to encourage you. Renew your mind. Renew your mind. When, we, when you have a renewed mind, it's not that way at all. Renewed mind basically says that when you have a renewed mind, you're to the point where it's like you're confident. You're confident in Christ. You're confident in who you are in Jesus Christ. And you're confident in what you can do. And when, the, when you think you get to that point where it's like when you have that renewed mind, the enemy is at that point that so they don't even want to touch you because they're going to afraid they're going to get their teeth kicked in. And that's, what, and that's the truth of it, is that whether we like it or not, as much as I'd, I've tried in my years past, I've tried to try to <clears throat> lay low, if that's the word, lay low. Whether I like it or not, it's, it's out there. And yes, I know the Bible says is that uh, the battle belongs to the Lord, and we are, we've overcome. Yes, and the, you know, the enemy has been defeated, and he is under our feet. And that is the truth. But one thing about the enemy, what about, about, this, about Satan, the best one of the illustrations I can give you, it's like that annoying fly in the house. You know that one annoying fly in the house that, you know, it's just buzzing around, you just can't seem to get him, you know? You're, you got, you know, you, you, you wake up in the morning, you hear this... You know, he's trying to buy the window or something like that. But that, it's the truth. It's like whether you like it or not, when, when you let your guard down, the enemy is like that. He's like that annoying fly that's in your house that's just driving you crazy. And you know what? We have the Garmungus fly swatter. Or we got the big nuclear bomb of raid we can take him out with. But I just, want to just, I just want to set the stage here is that whether we like it or not, we are in a spiritual battle. It says in Ephesians 6.12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness. So I just wanted to bring to light just some of the things that I have um, from, from experience in myself getting back into this fight. And you know, see, this works here. And so I just came up with a few little things. So one of the things, and I, just forgive me where I am, but I, I come from a work of, we have a lot of acronyms. You got a lot of acronyms. You may think stop. So I, I was trying to think of what can I make that would be relevant to what it is. And one of the things I said, it, it, said, it said, just stop. Just stop what you're doing. 
stop the occurring practices. And what I mean by that is stop, and you'll, you'll see into here, stop whatever you're doing and stop and just re do a reset. Stop and take a break. Stop and identify what's going on. Identify where your relationship is at and do a spiritual health check. I know one of the things that we do, one of the things that we do in, in, at work in the business side of things, we call it a, we'll call it a health check. And it isn't about your physical health, but about the health check of the business. And we'll just kind of take a stop and reset and just look back on what's working and what's not. And did, is there somewhere where we may have got sidetracked it? And so that's one of the things I just wanted to bring up here is to stop and do a spiritual health check on yourself. Look at your heart. Where is your heart right now? What, is, what has been consuming you? What has been, what has been bringing you into places? Um, identify the distractions that overcome you. Some of the distractions, some of the distractions in your life, at times they need to be they need to be prioritized, and at times the distractions need to be removed. Only you can identify the, what's distracting you. I know for myself and our family, as, as, as a busy family, we just, we, we were running with hockey and, and school sports and things like that. And you know, it's amazing how when, when we found that when we started to, um, our, when we started to let our guard down and we started to have a few distractions come into our, 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 into our lives, uh, one thing we found is the more the enemy tried to really stick it to us even more. And that's where we had to, to stop and just identify. And you know, some of the distractions, you can't help. You, people have kids, they have families. But let me tell you, when you learn to prioritize, when you start to uh, prioritize the, those things in your life, and you start to be able to put forth what is important and, and prioritize which is important. But there's times, though, where we get onto distractions that take us away from God's, what God's plan is for us and, and what he has in store for us. We get on paths, you know, and it could be at times is what we're watching on TV. It could be what we're listening to. You look in the back in the Bible, David was a man of battle. David went, was a man of battle, and he went to battle a lot. But one thing I know I found about when reading in there, and you get deeper, it seemed like when David wasn't on the battlefield, he got into trouble. He got into trouble. And one of them, what we all know, if you remember, is uh, when he should have been on the battlefield... He ended up falling and being with Bathsheba. And David was supposed to be a man of battle. He's supposed to be out there with his men. He's supposed to be out giving her. The military, back in, the, um, if you look back into military um, history, uh, along the mystery, from, right from medieval times to, um, to present time, time off, people that are trained to be in the military and on the battlefield, um, they have a time for a set time, and they've realized that if they have a, they have a, their time that they, their time of um, that they're in battle or on serve, and then they have their time of leave, and their their time of leave is a certain set of time, um, because they have done they've done studies and they realize that when guys start to get longer, when their leave gets to be long, they start to get in trouble. And I guess what I'm trying to bring that to us as, as, uh, as spiritual warriors here is that when we start to, um, when, we, when, we stop, when we stop to rest, are we resting right? Are we resting and are we, are we putting ourselves in, in right areas? Are we, are we getting too distracted? And I know for, I know at times, and I'll be the first to admit, Yes, I will get distracted. And there's times where you end up feeding, you end up filling yourself with unnecessary garbage that it, it's just totally distracts you and takes you off. And, and at times where you'll find too is that before you know it, the annoying fly that I was talking about comes flying in and just is bugging you and you're wondering what in the world's going on. And that's one thing I know like Tara and I, and a lot of guys know our, 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 our testimony and what we've been, you know, in regards to with our, um, fighting for our, our families and, and, and our girls and all that there, um, we found that when we, when we let our guard down, even just for a moment, that's when the enemy likes to come in. And that's where I just want to challenge us and challenge you guys all is that be, be cautious of what you are, when you are resting, 
rest in the Lord. It talks about resting in the Lord. And what I mean by that is like take the time to talk the time to stop and renew, renew your spirit, renew your mind, but don't fill it with things that are gonna distract you. And that's one of the things that David did is that he ended up just getting he got distracted when he should have been on the field and he probably longer what he should have been and he ended up getting in trouble. There may be times that a deep slumber comes upon you, causing you to be spiritually tired and exhausted. A lot of us can identify with that. And I just wanted to share with you guys, there was a time where I, there, was a, there was a deep slumber that came upon myself. And it, um, it was to the point where it was like you, you weren't, um, you, you, didn't, you didn't, it was really hard to, just to kind of know what, what area you're in. And I remember there was a few nights there. This was long. This was like about five years, five, six years ago, where I just remember it just felt like I was just getting up, going to work, and coming home. Getting up, going to work, coming home. And, you know, everything else around you. It seemed like it was just, you're just floating. And I knew, and it come to the point where I had to realize that, you know, I'm not in the right, I'm, I need to start to engage more. I need to, I need to start to, to get back in, in fellowship with um, with, with good like-minded people. I need to get back into the word. I need to start getting back on that battlefield. And one of the things that really brought it to me one night is um, I had a dream. And I literally, this dream was one of those dreams where it was, uh, is one of those, everyone's had those dreams. You kind of wake up and you get that cold sweat and stuff like that. But this one, but you ever have those ones where those, the dream that you have is, is pretty much real. And I remember one night I was, I was um, in my dream. There I was. I was um, I was in our own house, and I remember that there was there was definitely some kind of a presence of you know oppressive presence in our house in this dream of mine. And I remember literally starting to feel that there was something starting to choke me, and there was a there was a sense of just something dark, something not right. It was, a, it was a dark presence. And it was choking me, and I could literally, I could get to the point in my dream, I couldn't hardly breathe. And I remember, and I know this from my years past, of knowing that, you know what, yes, the enemy is defeated, and he is under my feet. And when we call upon the name of the Lord, it says we will be saved. And so I was struggling to get the words out to say, in the name of Jesus. It seemed like as I was trying to say that, in the, and I could just feel it just getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And finally, I just said, I finally got the words out. I said, in the name of Jesus. And it was almost like with a graspy voice. And it was like, boom, and I woke up. And I was in that sweat. And it was one of those things where it was, it was, I knew it was a dream, but it was real, but I knew that I was literally battling with the enemy. Let me tell you, I look at, I, I see what's happening. If you look what's happening in our city and you, you see what's happening in our schools and you see what's happening in our communities, there's a sense of a slumber that has came upon some of the people, even good people, and it's time it's time for them to rise up. It's time for them to rise up. When you feel that, when you feel it's time, when you when you feel that come upon you, it's time to shake it off. And I know for myself, I had to literally from that moment I knew that I knew that dream that I had wasn't just, oh, that's a bad set of progies I ate last night. It was a, it was a dream that I knew that it was like, no, it's time to get up and start pushing hard and pushing on. And when you feel that, when you feel that come over you, you need to stop, rise up, and shake it off. In Acts, 20, in Acts 28, verse 5, it talks about when Paul, Paul was uh, um, out on the road there, and he was uh, ministering, and he went to this one area, this one village there, where he, all of a sudden he got bit by a snake. He got bit by a snake. And people in the area, they knew that that, that snake is venomous, and that thing's po and he's going to die. It's going to be a matter of time. And what he did is he literally had that thing. It bit him. He grabbed it, and he shook it off. 
He ended up shaking it off. That's what we need to do. When the enemy feels that he's got that chokehold on you, it's time to shake it off. And that's where you need to rise up as people, rise up as God's chosen people and say, it's time to shake it off. We need to shake off whatever has latched onto us and get up and get ready. And you right now probably have things that you've identified in your own life right now. What has, what has latched onto you? What has been that life-sucking thing that has come onto you that's trying to draw life out of you? Right now, in the name of Jesus, it breaks now. And you speak that over yourself. You speak that. Because you know what? When you get to that point where you're in that, that dark place of slumber, where you don't know what's right and wrong, and it just seems like you're just floating in that, right now, the enemy is trying so hard to, to capture you. And he wants so hard to take what's the, the good in you and the joy in you right now. And right now, I just tell you, right now, as, as, as one with a renewed mind in Christ... You don't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. We push on. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. But yet it says, I have here, I, he's overcome, and I've come to bring life and life abundantly. And I know I'm going a little bit over my scriptures here, but it's the truth. Equip yourself for battle. Number two, equip yourself for battle. In the battle, we need weapons. You can't go to war or do anything without weapons. Um, you ain't going to go to a bear fight with a BB gun. I've heard that before. Um, you're not going to go to the battlefield with one of those little Nerf swords. You know, it's kind of useless. But you need to get some weapons. In Ephesians 6, 13, 13 to 17, it talks about the armor of God. And it talks about the armor of God. And what, what does the armor of God all mean here? And this is things that will, the tools to help us to go through this spiritual battle here. It talks about the belt of truth. Um, truth keeps us from giving into, giving into the world's beliefs. Compare your beliefs and actions to the truth of, of the word of God. It talks about the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is being honest, good, humble, and fair to others. It means standing up for what is right. The shoes of peace. The shoes of peace is being right with being right with God and being content and grounded in troubled times. I want to talk a little about the shoes of peace. Um, there was a there. Someone had said that they did some research on on soldiers back, like Roman soldiers, on um, on their footwear that they had, and a lot of them is like they talk about the shoes of peace, but they had spikes in their feet in their shoes, and the idea of the spikes is that when they're on the battlefield, you could dig in. You can dig in and you hard, and then you could climb and you can do whatever, you could dig in. And, and one of the things too is that, that, your, feet are, that your feet are prepared and they're, they're, they're ready and not, you don't have that nervousness feeling there, but to have that peace, the, the shoes of peace upon you. The shield of faith. Faith is, is being sure that God will keep his promises. Faith in God protects you when you're tempted in doubt. The helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation is to protect your mind. To have a renewed mind in Christ is understanding your identity in Christ. And last but not least, the sword of the spirit. The word of God. God's word is, offen is, an, is our offensive weapon that we use. The word of God is truth, it is constant, and it never changes. And that's the tool that we use, the word. His word is, brings life and brings life abundantly. Number three, ask someone to fight with you. This picture here, <laughs> you're going to laugh. My wife sent this to me. Oh, this was about uh, a couple months ago when we were uh, identifying that uh, things were kind of getting a little stressed in our family and stuff. And one, and one morning she sent me this. I was, uh, I was actually in a meeting and I got a text message and I popped out my phone and I seen this picture and she says, remember, honey, this is you and me. Well, I wish I had hair like that. <laughs> And my wife is way hotter than her. 
But that's one of the things that when we, when Tara and I, we, we first seen that one of the movies, Thor, that was, Tara had leaned over, we're in that movie, she says, honey, that's you and me. That's you and me. And you know, and I say, if I ask someone to fight with you, you've heard the phrase before, there's strength in numbers. You've heard that before. In Matthew 18 and 20, it says, where two or three are gathered together, I am there among you. There's times where when we go into battle, when you do, when you have up against your adversary or whatever, whatever thing has tried to bombard you or has come upon you, there's times where, you know, you can't do it yourself. You need to have somebody else with you. And I want to share a story about how this was true in, into my life thinking there. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it there. Am I moving too much? No. Oh. Okay. Behind you. There you go. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Strength in numbers. <laughs> strength. There's strength in numbers, yes. Where I, went with, where I want to go with this is this. It's something you may think it's small, but it spoke volumes in my life. And um, this was when I first entered into the workforce. I was 19 years old. I came into the oil and gas industry. So as you're young, you're, you're the new guy, you're young, you, um, you're gonna go out there and change the world, you figure. So this young buck who comes off a farm, all I've ever known is grain and driving tractors. I'm going into the oil and gas industry as a laborer and I'm going to change the world. And I went in there and did I get an eye opening because I realized that uh, the work, there was no problem doing work. I, I could work, uh, you know, the manual labor, that was no big deal. Um, but it was the camaraderie that came with it. And guys knew right away that I was different. They knew I had faith. They knew that I was different. I, I wasn't conforming to their actions and their, their patterns. And one of the things I realized and one thing that they found is that they're going to break me. They're going to try to break me. And they would continually razz and haze and bug and bug. And, and you know, I just kind of brush it off and brush it off and brush it off. And, and it just kept, but it, it kept going on and on. And then it seemed like it grabbed like second gear and it grabbed third gear. And I was single at the time and I started dating and I was dating Tara. And I was very quiet about, you know, not letting them know that I was, um, uh, and when I got engaged, I was very quiet. And they found out, and they, they said to me, and they were just giving it to me and giving it to me. And I, they said to me, they, they even tell me times, times like, oh, why are, you, why, why, why are you going to get married? You don't want to do that. Marriage is, that's no good. You know, marriages fall apart, you know, divorce rates, you know, and this and that. And, and they're like, you know, you should move in together and this and that. And I just said, you know what, let me tell you. <laughs> no, and they're like, well, one guy's like, well, you don't, old guy, you don't buy a pair of shoes without trying them on first. And I said, you know, dude, I said, when you know your size, you know your size. And she's a human being for crying out loud. You can't compare her to a pair of shoes. <laughs> but the fact that, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is they knew where I stood in my faith. And you know, there was just something about them they wanted to try. And, and, I, and it started to the point, it started to affect my mind. It really started to affect my, my behavior. And it was getting to be, I was getting to be very grouchy. And it was like, it was like that annoying fly I was telling you about there. And when I got married, I thought maybe, okay, it's going to end. It's done. You know, I'm part of the marriage club and that. <laughs> no, it grabbed fourth gear. I think even went into fifth gear at times. And it was to the point where I knew that I was under some kind of an attack in, in, in spiritual places. I knew it was. And I'll never forget this, but old friends of ours that used to attend Living Hope, they'd moved away probably about over 10 or 12 years ago. Pam and Greg Berg, we were over for supper one night, and uh, we're talking, and Greg had that sense of, he was a good, if anyone who knew Greg, but Greg had that sense of, he could tell when something wasn't right on your face. And he said to me, Greg, he said, Wade, what's up? And I just broke down. 
I broke down, and you may think, you know what, we like grow up, like, you know what, it's it's just it's just fun. Let me tell you, there, I don't understand what fun is, and then it gets to the point where you're almost you're almost getting to the point you're almost getting verbally abused and all the other stuff. It was it was serious. It was absolutely serious, and I didn't. You know, you look at how rights are this day and age now with workplace rights and stuff like that. I didn't realize that things were getting violated. I didn't know any better. And I remember I just I just literally just blew all over that night to to Pam and Greg what was going on, and um, it was hard. It was hard because you like you didn't understand what was going on, but yet you know it was a, a battle. And I was I was 21 years old. I was just still new to my faith and still growing. It's just newly married, and uh, it was literally to the point it was like bombarding, like it, it was affecting my sleep, and it was like I go on days off, and I was dreading coming back on that back for those days on. I just didn't know what to expect, you know. And anyways, I remember um, we left that night there, and I remember it was like. It was, I think I went on days off. No, no, sorry, I, I went, it was two days later. I didn't go into work for some reason. And I come back to work when I had to come back to work on a couple days later. And I was just like anticipating the razzing and all that stuff, you know. And the thing is, is it was, I, I, I wasn't I wasn't cursing, I wasn't swearing, I wasn't and I know that's what they're trying to get me to do. They're trying to break me. And I wasn't gonna do that because that's not who I am. And I just finally I just, I got tired of it. So anyways, that, that, that morning I went in. I was in the coffee room. It was always started in the coffee room. I'm sitting in the coffee room, and we actually start having a normal conversation. And it, and, it, and it stayed on as a normal conversation. And it continued to stay on as a normal conversation throughout that day. And then I went to home, went to work the next day. It continued to be the same. And I was like, this is something different. And I remember I talked to Greg a few days after. And he said to me, he said, you know, Wade? He said, Pam and I, we chose to fight with you. And he got on their knees when we left that night. And they prayed that it would stop. And it stopped. Let me tell you, there's strength in numbers. When you're up against the struggle, when you're up against whatever has been on your mind, whatever has been uh, come upon you, and you need someone else, get somebody to stand in faith with you. When two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst. You know, men don't go to battle by themselves. They go together, and they have partners, and they have each other's back. Pray in the Spirit. It finally says, it says in Ephesians 6, it says, pray in the Spirit at all times, on every occasion. Declare the word of the Lord daily. Engage in thanksgiving, praise and worship. Praise is the joyful remembrance of what God has done for us. We worship God for who he is, and we praise God for what he has done. When we are fighting, when we're on that battlefield, if you were to go, if you look back in the days of some of the old, old stuff, where you get the guy with the drum and he's beating away there, there's something about the music, the, the, the music that they had, the, the, the drum beat and all that stuff there, it would kind of pump up the men, it would keep them going. Um, you look back in the days of the Bible and David there, David would, would, would uh, before he would go to battle, he would enter into thanksgiving and praise before he would go into battle, knowing it's just saying, God, you're going to go before us, and we're gonna, you're going to help us be victorious on this. But praying in the Spirit. And this is the one thing that I know that, that we need to continue to do, this we need to rise up on even more as believers, is this, is that you need to start professing Jesus Christ over your day, every day, and not just your day, over your family, over your work, over your finances, whatever it is, over your health, whatever it is. That's what I'm saying right now 
is declare that every, every day. Because when you do that, you're continually drawing that line. You're continually digging in and you're drawing that line and you're building, you're building more whatever. The, en- the enemy's going to try to come and push against whatever you have and he is going to, he's going to try. But the more you profess, the more you declare, the more you continue to build up your strength and your faith, he don't want to touch you. He won't want to touch you because he's going to afraid he's going to get his teeth kicked in. Last, I call this Hold the Line. Who here has seen that movie, The Patriot, with Mel Gibson? Oh, that's probably one of my favorite movies. I am a sucker for kind of war movies. But when I watch this movie again and again and again, and I've seen this clip, it was the scene where they call it, was at the very end when they were, it was the, one of the final battles that the Americans had against the British to take over and to finally de- de- to defeat the British. It was one strategic, it was the strategic battle that pushed the Americans forward and eventually within a few months time, the British had surrendered. And what had happened in this scene is that they had prepared for this battle. They knew that they were, they were up against, there was thousands to thousands of Americans to 10,000 British soldiers. And they knew, they said, you know what, we're going to go. We're going to give it our best. We're going to go. And they strategically, what happened is that they, they, put, they purposely put less guys out on the field. But they held everyone back down in the lower part of the battlefield. And so then Americans, like, we're going to, we're going to, ah, we got, or the British, like, we got this. We got these. This is just a few guys. Oh, we can push these guys right over. And so they sent their troops out there. And they went out there, and they think they had it, and they start charging. The Americans, they fired a couple shots. Instead of running towards them, they ran backwards. And what they did is they drew the enemy closer because the, the, the British had said, send them all. Let's just finish this right now. Send them all. Uh, he wants this to be done today. Send them all. And so as they came over, there they were. It was complete ambush. And they realized that, there's more people here than what we thought there was. And the battle began. So as they're battling and they're fighting on and they're pushing forward, they're, they're battling, they're moving on. And here what happened in the scene is that they got up to, um, as they pushed forward, they got up to an area kind of where the, where the battle line was, I guess. And they seen that there was like, uh, there was a few, there was like maybe 50, 100 soldiers. And they're like, Americans were like, we're done. We're done for. We, we, we bit more than we can handle. We don't know what we can do. And what happened is that they started to turn around. And one of the guys in the movie had said, he said, the line is faltering. The line is faltering. We need to hold the line. And so that's where you see that, that, that symbol there where Mel Gibson, he grabs that. He grabs that, that flag because the flag was showing the direction of where they were supposed to be going. So the guy who was running the flag, he was running backwards. Mel Gibson grabs the flag. He says, no. He says, no. No retreat. No retreat. We hold the line. We hold the line. And what happened is that the soldiers came along. They realized that they weren't up against much. And they pushed on and they ended up winning the battle. I'm bringing that to our terms in our own lives right now. Are we holding the line? Because at times I know I can figure, find it, it difficult for us to hold the line. But I challenge you, I encourage you to continue to hold that line. Whatever, whatever battle that the Lord, that, that, that you're having with, the Lord is with you on this. And you just continue to push on and push forward because I know that you will, you will overcome. We have won. And that's the thing. There's right now, we're, we, we see in, in, in this day and age, we're seeing families under attack. We're seeing marriages under attack. We're seeing uh, in, with our children, with our teenagers, we're seeing so much garbage. We're with suicide and things like that. And it's time for us to stop just sitting back as believers. It's, stop, it's, time, for us to just, it's time for us to stop and say, no, no, my family's not going to be part of this. No, 
we don't need this. We need to push on. We need to push forward as believers because that's why we are here. That's why God put us on this earth to change this world. Amen? Amen. 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 So I just want to encourage you guys. Let's just stand here. Terry, if you don't mind coming. I just, uh, I want to challenge you guys. Whether we like it or not, I've said this before, we are in a battle. And you know what to happen, you know what's happening in your own families. And you know what's happening in your own, in your own places. And you know, it, it could be a battle with your marriage. It could be a battle with your children. It could be a battle with your health. It could be a battle with your mind. Whatever it is, it's nothing that the Lord can't handle. He has given us the tools to be able to push on and hold that line. You know, we, we, I know a lot of the stuff today, we could probably go deeper into it. But what I'm trying to do is to be able to give you guys and tell you that I'm here to tell you that we are overcomers. Yep. Yeah. We are. The enemy has been defeated and he is under our feet. And whatever it is, it's time for you. There may be some of you here today that you maybe probably can relate to a deep slumber. There may be some of you here today that can relate to uh, some of the stuff that uh, I, I've spoke to. And I just want to encourage you, shake it off. It's time to get up. It's time to rise up. It's time to rise up. Tara has something she wants to share. I just wanted to just add to what Wade was saying too. So many people give up before their breakthrough. And we need to realize that that verse that Wade had spoke before, that God has given us all power over the power of the enemy, that those two powers mean different. But the power that he's given us is the authority over the enemy's ability. That power of the enemy is the, he has the ability to do it. So like a thief has the ability to come in and steal, but the police officer has the authority over that ability, just like God has given us authority over the enemy's ability. So whatever it is in your life that that you need a breakthrough in, whether it's relationships, whether it's finances, whether it's your health or your faith, whatever it might be, there is a fight going on and God has given us authority over the enemy's ability. And uh, I just wanna encourage you to, to grow your faith. Without faith, it's impossible, impossible to please God. And you might wonder, how do we do that? The Bible says in Romans that faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word of God. And there's so many things going into our, our there's so many distractions as Wade was saying, but we have so much access to everything. The word of God can be so easy for us nowadays. We can even, on those apps, we can even push play and it could be, it could audio, whatever it might be. You can listen to, to messages online of whoever it might be, Todd White, Dan Moeller, you know, anyone, there's so many good teachings out that we can be hearing the word of God constantly, building our faith. And even as we read the word, read it out loud, read it slowly, let it soak in, hear yourself read the word and declare the word as Wade was saying, declare the word over yourself. So I just wanted to say that. Amen. Amen. So before we close, I just feel that it's an opportunity to come forward. And I would really like to play. Prayer team, you guys can come here too, but just really pray. There's some of you here today, I know, that you fought a long time. And there's some of you here that feel that I'm just, I'm done. I, I've, I'm, I'm ready to give up. And I'm here to say right now with confidence 
And boldness is don't give up. We don't give up. We press on. We hold the line. There may be someone here today that you may be battling right now with your health. And I don't know what healthy condition it is. I'm here to say right now, you do not have to walk in that. You do not have to walk in that. It says in his word, it says, by his stripes, we are healed. In the Old Testament, it says, by his stripes, we are healed. And in the New Testament, it says, and by his stripes, we were healed. And the reason it says that we're healed is because it was done, bought, and paid for through the blood of Jesus. We don't need to walk in this anymore. We don't need to walk in, in, in feeling that, that slumber upon you. And I just, I just challenge you and I encourage you that whatever has gripped you, whatever has come upon you, Jesus is here right now to remove it. He is here right now to remove it. And you're not alone. You're not alone. It's, I've always had this, I, when, when Tara and I had done youth group for about nine years, I had a lot of youth coming to me and they, they, the, the struggles and the battles that they had and, 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 and little things that they had. And I always said, I always said to him, I said, I know why you're going through this. Because you're on the right track. The enemy doesn't want you to succeed. The enemy doesn't want us to succeed. It's time for us to rise up. It's time for us to rise up and take that annoying fly that's in our house or whatever is bothering us and squash it right down in the name of Jesus Christ. It's time to start to take the word of the Lord. It's time to take the word of God that he has, that he has given us. Father, he said, hey, I've given you all power and authority. I've given you the ability to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. And he also says in his Bible, in Revelation, says, and we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. These are promises. Like I said, the word of God is truth. It is constant. It never changes. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is the spirit. It is the sword of the spirit that we use to fight. But I just want to encourage you. If that's you today, don't leave without someone coming alongside of you and standing in the gap and standing in faith for you, saying, you don't need this. To stand in agreement with you. A friend once told me, and I actually found it kind of surprising, that a lot of people don't understand that they're welcome at church. Now, some people, he said, have the idea that church is like a, a club where you should be a member before you attend things. Well, we want you to know it's not like that, and we would love it if you could join us at Living Hope. We're on the corner of King and Kensington. We have services Sunday morning. You can check our website to, or check the newspaper for our service times. We'd love to have you come. Uh, apart from that, though, we're glad that you are with us and hope that you'll join us again.